Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna, the fourth child and youngest daughter of Tsar Nicholas II and Empress Alexandra, Grand Duchess Anastasia was born on June 18, OS 5, 1901, at the Peterhof Palace, St. Petersburg, Russia. With her Romanov blue eyes and her light brown copper hair, Anastasia was very lively and energetic with a fantastic sense of humor. As a small child, she was very, very mischievous and very charming. Margareta Eager recalls, I had got from England a preparation for the children's hair and was rubbing it into little Anastasia's head one evening. She objected, and I said, It will make your hair grow nicely, darling. So she submitted. Next evening, I went to get the kapuka from the cupboard, and Mademoiselle ran off in the next room. She returned, dragging by its leg an awful dolly, a regular fetish, minus a wig, one eye, and an arm. She gravely took a little piece of sponge and began to rub the kapuka into the creature's head. I demonstrated, telling her I had to send to England for the stuff and did not want it wasted. She looked at me most reproachfully and said, My poor Vera, she has got no curls. This will make her hair grow. Of course, she got her way. Anastasia enjoyed taking pictures, acting in plays, playing the balalaika, drawing, painting, art, and coloring in and, of course, making others laugh. Her name day was on the 4th of January. She earned the nickname of Shibzik, or as we know it in English, Imp, because of her mischievous ways and her impish behavior. She was also called Malenkaya, or as we know it in English, Little One. Her favorite perfume was Violet. Like her sisters, Anastasia was called by her patronymic, Anastasia Nikolaevna by family, servants, and friends. She was brought up as simply as possible, being made to only sleep on hard camp cots unless she was ill and having to take cold baths every morning. Anastasia and her elder sister Maria were very close. She and Maria were referred to as the little pair, and the two shared a room. Anastasia tried and often dominated her older sister, and if she kicked someone up or teased someone, Maria would always try to apologize, but was never able to stop her. English tutor Sidney Gibbs recalls one day he was waiting to start a lesson when Anastasia marched in, dressed like a chimney sweep, complete with the tools and all black from soot. There had been a fancy dress party that previous night, and sat down at her desk, everything was normal. Olga, Tatiana, and Maria could not stop laughing as Alexandra told Anastasia to go and get cleaned up and ready. Anastasia got up, cleaned herself up, and came back with a really red, scrubbed face. As a student, Anastasia learned French, English, Russian, history, art, dance, and arithmetic like her sisters did, and her favorite tutor was her Russian tutor, Petrov. Pierre Gilliard said that Anastasia had a very good French accent and said, The years passed, and in 1910, Anastasia became my pupil. She was then eight and a half, and I have seldom seen such zeal for learning in a girl of that age. She had remarkable memory and made amazingly good progress. It was like a game to her to learn by heart anything she wanted, and as she had an excellent French accent, and she recited it successfully, whether prose or poetry. However, as she grew older, she lost an appetite for learning and became lazy in her studies. She would climb up trees to escape her lessons and would refuse to come down. Despite her energetic and lively nature, Anastasia suffered from the foot condition, hallux valgus, causing both of her big toes to curl inward, surgery was considered but it decided that it was too risky. She also had a weak muscle in her back, which had to be massaged twice a week. She really disliked having the massage, and when the masseuse came to massage it, she would often hide away from her. Anastasia received her regiment, the 148th Caspian Infantry in the year 1915, but sadly, due to the war, never got to review her regiment or was photographed in her uniform, possibly didn't even receive one either, due to World War I raging on at the time. As told by Gleb Botkin, once, in Sarsko Selo, my father found her alone in the dining room of the palace, 
tired and perspiring, yet hopping energetically on one leg around the table. "'What are you doing?' my father asked her. An officer on the yacht told me that to hop around a dining room table on one leg helps one to grow. Anastasia explained with great seriousness, without for a moment interrupting her strenuous exercise. The war soon struck in August 1914. Anastasia had just entered her teenage years, and with her then 15-year-old sister Maria, who were both too young to become Red Cross nurses like Olga, Tatiana, and her mother, she would go and visit the wounded soldiers in the hospital, playing games with them, reading to them, and talking to them. Another solitor who was also treated at the hospital, who knew Anastasia commented that she had a laugh like a squirrel and walked rapidly as though she tripped along. Also, as recalled by Captain I.V. Stepanov, in her pockets there were always a lot of round, sweet things, creme brulee. She gave us a lot of them and ate herself all the time. I saw her love for sweeties, but the wounded were not allowed to offer something to the Grand Duchess. One day, someone brought me a box of Japanese cherries and sugar. I let the box opened on my table. Anastasia saw them and with great pleasure ate some of them and was looking around. Can or not one of her sisters see her? 1917 soon came around, and during the height of the revolution, Anastasia and her siblings all came down with themizels, and also during this time, Nicholas had abdicated the throne, and the entire family were placed under house arrest at Sarsko Silo. This was also the year Anastasia turned 16 years of age in June, the only one of the sisters to turn 16 after the revolution. The family were at Sarsko Silo until August 1917, where they were then transferred to a town in Siberia called Tobolsk, staying in the governor's mansion. During her stay in Tobolsk, she wrote a summary of Robert Browning's poem, Evelyn Hope, in English. A young girl who was called Evelyn had just died. She was lying in the coffin, very pretty. All her things were on the same place, nothing was changed, and even the flower which she gathered stood in the glace, but was beginning to fade. When she died, she was only 16 years old. There was a man who loved her without having seen her, but knew her very well. And she heard of him also. He never could tell her that he loved her, and now she was dead. But still, he thought that when he and she will live their next life, whenever it will be that... Nicholas, Alexandra and Maria stayed there until April 1918, the month that they would make their final journey to their final destination, Yekaterinburg. Anastasia, Olga, Tatiana, and Alexei stayed behind in Tobolsk with servants and tutors, until May 1918 when they made their final journey to join their sister and parents aboard the ferry. The Russ, Anastasia, taking her beloved cavalier King Charles' dog, Jemmy, with her. Gilliard and Gibbes did not join them in Yekaterinburg. Life at Yekaterinburg was different. The girls learned how to bake bread and had to do their own chores and laundry. Alexander Strakotin, one of the Ipatiev house guards, remembered Anastasia as very friendly and full of fun. Another guard commented of Anastasia, a very charming devil. She was mischievous and, I think, rarely tired. She was lively and was fond of performing comic mimes with the dogs, as though they were performing in a circus. There, she and her family remained until the early hours of July 17, 1918, when the entire family were shot dead, along with other residents of the household in the cellar of the Apatiev house. Anastasia Nikolaevna was 17 years old. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos for more videos like these. Anyways, I love you guys, and see you guys in the next video.